Number 17. That would be, Do You Like Hitchcock? Um, this was a TV movie. And it's quite mediocre. Uh, pretty bad, uh, not badly made, but uh, mediocrely made. And pretty much it's a film about a guy who sees a murder in his rear window. And uh, he begins to realize that the murderer was taking cues from Hitchcock films. And he tries to solve it all by himself. And it it's not bad. And uh, it does have some worthwhile scenes um, to stick around for. And does it has maybe too many Hitchcock references that kind of take away from the film. Uh, one thing I'd like to know about this film, it really could have done without the opening sequence where the young protagonist sees two witches uh kind of doesn't really um uh, make too much sense it's supposed to kind of parallel how he stuck his nose in something that he shouldn't have back then and now he's doing the same thing now and back then he was he ran away on his bike and now he's running away driving away on his moped in a hilarious scene. Which, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna sh share that scene with you. Okay, so this guy is spying. And another guy noticed that he's spying on him. So he tries to jump off the... climb down the balcony. And this other guy, who knows that he was spying, he was being spied on, is just staring at him. Saying, uh, well, uh, he's taking a while to get down to the ground, but in the script it says that I'm not supposed to catch up with him, so I'm just gonna wait and gape at him. So then eventually he comes running after him, and uh, the protagonist, he hurts his leg, he tries getting on his moped, he falls down. It's a hilarious and I believe intentionally so, scene, which um, is one of the highlights of the film. So, yeah, I wouldn't particularly recommend it. It is a TV movie, but it is not completely horrible. Next, we have The Card Player. This movie I was a little iffy about. I enjoyed this movie a lot up until a certain point, and that certain point would be the ending. Now, I don't want to give out any spoilers, but the ending was really over the top. And basically what this movie is, it's about this killer who abducts women, and he contacts the police through a computer, and he plays a poker game with them. And um, in this poker game, whatever, whenever the police lose a hand, he dismembers the victim. Whenever, if the police win, then he lets the victim go free. And um, those, the segments where um, during the card game are pretty intense. They're uh, quite disturbing to watch. I would say this is one of... Argento's one of his most disturbing films but the thing is that those tense scenes are could really have been done by anyone because mostly you're seeing the computer screen and if you don't know anything about poker then you are kind of uh, lost kind of have to know what's going on and who's winning and but it's also um like i said it could have been done by anyone it's just a screen and then 
you see a live video chat with the victim who is screaming a lot throughout the whole thing. It could be quite annoying after the who knows how many games they play. In the first game, it was quite uh, effective. But anyways, it could get it could get pretty annoying. And also, this film had um was kind of interesting to see how with these raised stakes, everyone pretty much reacted the same way as if they were watching a poker game with money. It almost looked like they were goofing off in the office, except you can hear screams of a woman in the background. But anyways, it was quite an intense, enjoyable movie up until the end where they reveal who the killer was and that was um, a little bit of an over-the-top childish segment that kind of put the film a little bit down the notch for me. Pelts. This was Argento's um, other Masters of Horror film and once again, it felt very unargento, but it was actually very entertaining, and I think it's one of the bloodiest uh, segments of the Masters of Horror, and it uh, kind of has a reference to one of his well-known movies, so it does have a few argentoisms, and what it's about is uh, this guy, I think he sees this animal pelt and he really wants it and then he goes a little crazy and it's pretty bloody but it's also pretty comical it seems to be more of a dark comedy and it's memorable but um it doesn't really feel like argento which is not a bad thing but as i said i give it a shot it's a, it's a good episode of the Masters of Horror film series, but not a particularly good Argento. Now we're getting into uh, some movies that I like quite a bit. Trauma is uh, his 1993 movie, and I believe it is the first movie to star Asa Argento. And she's uh, quite good in her role in this film. And this is uh, a Gallo, like many of his earlier films. And uh, as I was watching uh, Argento's early films, I kind of picked up some things about how the Gallo works. It's always a detective story, not usually... Uh, with actual detectives doing the detective work, though they do play a role. And um, the killer is always someone we've seen before in the movie. And you kind of have to try to guess who done it. And it has lots, it's pretty much a slasher with an actual who done it plot that, um, and lots of atmosphere, very atmospheric. But, um, yeah, this film, it's kind of odd. It's very, it's hard to recommend to someone, but it is one of Argento's better modern films. Um, he brings up one of Argento's themes, which is of trauma, and how it could uh, affect someone so that they... Uh, yeah, big theme is that killers are created, not born, and that trauma and the witnessing of a killing could result in you becoming like a killer. And it has a lot of references to some of uh, Argento's earlier films, notably Deep Red, which is one of his most beloved films. And... Um, Hard, it's really hard to talk about this film because I did enjoy it. And I did think it was a good film, 
but it's almost hard to recommend it as an Argento film. And perhaps if you watched it, you would understand what I mean by that.